What difference can a photograph make? This is a photo by Gordon Parks. Take a second and ask yourself, what do you see? It's a little boy with one leg walking out of a dark building into a sunlit city street. He's framed by the darkened doorway. Across the street sit two little girls. One of them looks away while the other looks directly at the boy and, by association, at us. This photograph was taken in Washington, D.C. in June of 1942. It marries many of the elements I find powerful in photography. It's technically and artistically excellent. The way the depth of field seems to stretch to eternity, the subtle balance of light and dark, the story only hinted at. It's a moving photo. Recent events in this country have brought many of us to despair. I'm not an attorney, I'm not a politician, I'm not a millionaire. I work as a writer and run a small niche photography channel on YouTube. I found myself wondering recently what I could do. How much difference can photography make? When and how can a photograph make a difference? Gordon Parks was born into poverty and segregation in 1912, the youngest of 15 children. When he was 14 years old, his mother died, and he spent his last night in his childhood home, sleeping next to her coffin. The next day, he drove to Minnesota to live with a sister. Parks didn't pick up a camera until he was 25 and working in a flop house in Chicago. He saw the work of photographers like Dorothea Lange and Walker Evans in magazines and was inspired. He bought a Voigtlander Pseudo TLR from a pawn shop and taught himself to take pictures. One of Parks' earliest and most famous photos is this image of a black cleaning woman named Ella Watson. Parks was in Washington, working for the Farm Security Administration, when he found her sweeping the FSA offices. She told him that she'd become pregnant as a teenager and that her husband was shot to death two days before the birth of her second daughter. Parks said, I first asked her about her life, what it was like, and it was so disastrous that I just felt that I must photograph this woman, and in a way that would make the public feel what Washington, D.C. was in 1942. The image, named American Gothic after the famous Grant Wood painting, depicts Ella Watson with a mop and broom in front of the American flag. As with all of Park's work, the image itself is visually startling. It's a high contrast image where Watson stands out as an almost three-dimensional figure in front of the flag. In the painting, American Gothic, a farmer and his daughter stand in front of their carpenter gothic style home. But where the farmer works for his family and his home, Watson toils for a nation that rejects her. American Gothic represents only one photo in a series of images Parks took as he followed Watson and her family, but it stands out as a stunning and powerful image of black life in 1940s America. Disadvantage, Parks would later say, sometimes pushes you, you know, if you use it right, because you want to rid yourself of those things that hurt you emotionally when you were coming up. There is a power in simply documenting a thing. It's one thing to know that children are working in factories, but to see the little boys and girls lined up, covered in dirt in the looming shadows of the textile machines, that's something else entirely. Likewise, it's one thing to know that segregation existed, but it's something else to see it in person. Park's A Segregation Story is a series of color images taken in 1956 of a black family's day-to-day -day life in the American South. These images make the atrocity real. They show you people living lives that are in many ways not dissimilar from our own, but in other, more substantial ways, completely alien. They melt away the abstraction of the word segregation and replace it with the faces of mothers and fathers, sons and daughters, all living in a place that refuses to acknowledge their humanity. I think the fact that, unlike most of Park's work, these photographs were taken in color makes a difference. This is not ancient history, no matter how badly many people in this country want to imagine it is. In 1956, my own father was alive. He was a child living in northern Michigan, free from the shackles of racism or segregation. To imagine that the echoes of this history don't still exist, well within the span of one human life, is laughable. 
Each photograph in a segregation story exists both on its own and as a piece of a larger whole. Many of the photographs show what would otherwise be positive experiences, uh, looking through a shop window at dolls, buying ice cream, going to the movies, but they're all distorted through the prism of segregation. When I look at these photographs, the single biggest thing that stands out to me is the dignity with which these people carry themselves. In a time and place that's done everything it can to disempower and dehumanize them, these men, women, and children carry themselves with a sort of pride that's inspiring and beautiful and, and not just a little bit heartbreaking. That is, I think, the power of a photograph. More so than a video or a song, it allows us a window into a world and then asks us to fill in the blanks. Can a photograph change the world? I think it can. Park's images matter because they're honest, beautiful, and overwhelmingly human. I had initially wanted to end this video on a variation of the Park's quote that his camera was a weapon. But I googled it and found a million photographers saying something similar, and it, it just seemed too cliched and simple for a man this interesting. It's by far his most famous quote. He used a variation on it in the title of his autobiography, in fact. And I can certainly appreciate the metaphor of using a camera rather than a, a gun or a knife to combat the agents of social injustice. But Gordon Parks was wholly unique and fascinating. Parks was a fashion photographer, filmmaker, documentarian, musician, and artist. He was a brilliant man who clawed himself up from a childhood of poverty and racial oppression to create enduring art. Gordon Parks' continuing influence is undeniable, from Kendrick Lamar's Element video to the countless versions of Shaft. Did I not mention that Gordon Parks directed Shaft? <laughs> yeah, he did. I think a man as complex and fascinating as Gordon Parks deserves a complex and fascinating kind of quote. So let's give Gordon a different and I think more poetic last word. I've known both misery and happiness, lived in so many skins it is impossible for one skin to claim me. And I have felt like a wayfarer on an alien planet at times, walking, running, wondering about what brought me to this particular place and why. But once I was here, the dreams started moving in, and I went about devouring them as they devoured me. Rage on that beat, going crazy.